So over the years, the editors here at bikepacking.com have come to the realization that some products and accessories are just not very functional or reliable for bikepacking. And while these products may be totally great for your day rides, there's a specific reason on why they just might not work very well for bikepacking. So in this video, I'm gonna share 10 products that fit that description. Let's do it. If you like what you see in our videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And if you wanna help support us, you can do that by signing up for the Bikepacking Collective. The Bikepacking Collective is pretty cool. Not only are you helping support our website, everything on YouTube, but you get a kickback as well. You get the Bikepacking Journal twice a year. This is a print publication with amazing stories and photography. Also included in the Bikepacking Collective is discounts on gear. So 20% off our merch store and discounts on a variety of different brands that we work with, including WTB, Revelate Designs, Gaia, Ride With GPS, just to name a few. So if you're interested in learning more about the Bikepacking Collective or wanna sign up today, you can click on the link below or check out the card right here. As always, thank you all so much for the support. All right, so the first one is multi-tools or small multi-tools or multi-tools that really don't get the job done. Multi-tools are great because they do hold a ton of different tools on them. The problem is they're typically really small tools or they're not very long. These tiny little hex keys can be troublesome when you're trying to adjust your bike, especially in hard to reach areas. So that's why it's not a bad idea to carry full size hex or Torx keys and a full size chain breaker. They'll give you more leverage, they're a lot easier to get to hard to reach areas, and they really don't add up too much in space or weight. Typically I'd carry the hex keys that would need to fix my bike, so the common size is three, four, five, and six, and a T25. All right, so next up is CO2. While it can be great for day rides, and especially when you're trying to reseat a tubeless tire or something like that, but you definitely shouldn't rely on it. Not to mention CO2 is heavy and it doesn't work very well with tubeless systems. So I rarely ever carry CO2, but I do carry this Big Air. It used to be called Big Air and now MSW produces it. It's like a propane mixture. So I'll use this for really stubborn tires if I'm looking to reseat the tire after say stitching a sidewall, but really I'm relying on my hand pump and a quality hand pump at that. So with the popularity of gum sidewalls or it's tan sidewalls, we've come to the realization that these tires seep sealant or dry out sealant much faster than a standard black sidewall does. Not to mention most of these tan sidewall tires are much lighter and don't have nearly as much flat protection. So for this reason alone, we try to steer clear of tan sidewall tires. There are some exceptions out there, but for the most part, we like to stay away. So what I do look for is a durable sidewall, flat protection, and sure, it might be a little bit heavier and I might not get as much of a supple ride quality. What I found with these more durable tires is I'm actually able to run slightly lower tire pressures that give me that supple ride quality anyways. While the latest Maxxis DHR Plus or this Terravel Kessel might be great for cornering on your local trails for your day rides, the reality is you're likely not going to be pushing those corners nearly as hard while bikepacking. For bikepacking, we like to consider a tire or tire combination that rolls a little bit better than something like this. As the miles add up, having a faster rolling tire, both front and rear, will definitely save your legs in the long run. I'm not gonna get into tires and tire combinations in this video, but there are some fantastic tire combinations and tires for bike packing out there. So you know those new gravel race shoes, they're all shiny, they're super, super stiff, they're made for adventure? Yeah, don't bring those shoes on your bike packing trip. More times than not, those shoes are way too stiff for bikepacking. They're not gonna be comfortable for multiple days. And that means they're super lightweight and they're not that durable. We like to consider flat shoes or a clipless system that not only flexes well, that has a little bit of tread, and of course, some comfort for all day riding. So this one might be a little bit more obvious, but regular old cotton t-shirts. I know plenty of you probably use a cotton t-shirt for just an hour long day ride, and that's fine. Cotton just doesn't dry out that well, and over an extended period of time, can definitely be stinky. So we like to use some sort of a wicking shirt or a more practical option, especially for all day riding, is a merino wool t-shirt. Merino wool has more insulating properties and it just doesn't stink. And typically, 
they look pretty cool. Another shirt I don't like to use is those jerseys, those cycling jerseys, because they have pockets in the back and I tend to fill them up with way too much stuff and I don't need that stuff back there. And I find that I'm more comfortable in something a little bit more loose fitting, especially over a multi-day trip. Let me guess, I bet some of you use one of these on your day rides. I know I do from time to time. The upside with a backpack, it gives you more storage space. And I know some people need more storage space if you have a small frame or not much storage on your frame or if you're just a shorter rider on a smaller bike. The downside here is that these bags can carry a lot of stuff and that means that there's a lot more weight on your shoulders and that also means there's a lot more weight on your seat bones. And when you have more weight on your seat bones, you're probably going to deal with more, you know, issues down there. So this backpack has a three liter bladder in it. That's really, really heavy. So if you do have to carry a backpack, consider carrying the water and the heavy items on the frame and on the bike and the lighter items in the bag. So I'm willing to bet that some of you have used or seen a screen like this. This is the Trail Forks app, or you've probably used MTB Project. Those apps are great for mountain biking. You can figure out the trail you're on, how difficult the trail is, how much climbing it has, what have you. So while I love these apps, I don't like to rely on them for my bike packing trips. Typically what I'll do is build my route on Ride with GPS or Gaia, and that way I can upload the GPX file to my GPS unit so I can follow the direction on my GPS instead of having to take out my phone and opening up the app and trying to figure out if I can connect these two trails together. These apps are great resources, but I don't like to rely on them. The beauty of bikepacking is typically you're planning a little bit more in advance. Because of that planning time, it allows you to reduce the use of single use packaging and it gives you the opportunity to make your own snacks or meals from the bulk item section of your grocery store or whatever is in your fridge. I know I need to do a better job of this, but Cass Gilbert has done a really good job of this and he's provided a handful of recipes on bikepacking.com, which I will link below. Finally, one of the biggest pieces of advice that was given to me when I first started bikepacking, I'm gonna give to you. Using products that you're unfamiliar with, new products, things that you're just not sure how they're gonna work out in the field, Leave them at home. Using what you're comfortable with and what you know will help avoid those really unfortunate situations. So that about does it. But now it's time to hear from you all. So what specific product or accessory do you use on your bikepacking trips that you probably wouldn't consider using on your day rides? Leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, pedal further.